And now we have Philippe Tang talking about a Splunk bot he made called Ponybot. Give it up for Phil! Um, well, thank you for having me uh, here today. Uh, thanks, Clara, for the uh, quick intro. That's pretty cool of you. Um, so I'll present myself. I'm uh, Phil Tang or Philippe Tang. It's up to you. Um, I'm actually from the Splunk at Splunk team as Clara. Um, so I'm a Splunk engineer, but also a product owner. Uh, so essentially what we do uh, at Splunk at Splunk is just to uh, build our own, our solve, solve our own problems, but also try to build like showcase for our customers to kind of, hey, this is how we can use Splunk uh, better. And uh, yeah, just uh, some cool examples. So uh, what I'm going to present today is more like a fruit of our one of our Hack, Hack Week project we had at Splunk. Um, so we tried to solve our own problem, right? And, um, and you guys will probably figure uh, what I'm, I'm trying to go towards to. Um, so the next one is just to get you guys to go through um, really quick, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's gonna be shared for, for the, the whole audience. So I'm good with that. Uh, so the main problems we, that we, we keep seeing here um, at Splunk is that we do run our own internal Slack channel. So we're all the, um, the main Splunk experts internally as well. So we, we do get a lot of questions all over uh, pretty much 24 seven. So the, the, one of the main problem is that people keep asking the same questions. And I'm pretty sure you guys are having the same problem on the uh, Splunk user group as well. Uh, the second one is that everyone is busy. Um, we do have our daily work as well. And sometimes it's really hard to kind of keep up. Uh, I know every one of you is kind of really nice of helping other people, but also at the same time have some duties for work as well. And the last one is that uh, different time zones, right? Um, sometimes when you uh, Slack someone, you expect to have um, an answer like really fast. And, and so how do you deal with those kind of issues, right? And so in a perfect world, um, eventually what we needed was to increase the productivity. Uh, how do we scale ourselves to be more available to everyone and help everyone, right? Uh, second one, how do we share knowledge on the fly? Um, I know everything is available uh, online. You just search on docs, answers, all of that. But sometimes like Slack is just kind of pretty good because you get access to someone uh, live uh, and more human as well and more personalized answers. And the last one is make it available 24-7. Like um, how do you stay up like... 24 seven, do you go through a bunch of Red Bulls or do you just uh, poke someone until they finally get answers uh, to you, right? Um, so fruit of our, our hack week was that we created a um, Slack bot called uh, Ponybot. Um, so date of birth, she was born on August 2nd, uh, 10 to 18 in the morning. Uh, job title, your super awesome Ponybot. Mission is actually to help Splunk users, community, anytime, anywhere. And favorite quote, life isn't always palm trees and ponies, but it should be because we love ponies. Um, I'm not going to show that. Uh, I'll go through the demos um, afterwards. So we have a, we, we came up with a vision, which is more like ride your own pony anywhere, anytime, 24 seven in real time. Um, like I said previously, we're always looking for answers like uh, really straightforward and really fast. And so coming up with a Slack bot could actually just be more natural and be your personal assistance in a way that uh, you can get your answers anytime, anywhere, uh, mobile if you want to. And the idea behind Pony is that it could be very versatile. So she could be answering a bunch of different topics from different departments, uh, different subjects. So it could be HR, legal, IT related, could be security. And you can see on the bottom left where she could wear many hats, right? Um, you want it to be more uh, flexible in a way that she could answer any type of questions you want uh, at any time. So I'll, I'll go more into the technical details. So how many horsepower she got? Uh, so what does she eat? Um, very, very simple. Um, so this is the diagram that we have here. So just to show you the call flow where a Splunker would just ask a questions on Slack, uh, either through a Slack channel or even direct message if you want to keep things more private and not share with the, the broad audience. That's also possible. Um, so it's, it, 
once it's received a message, so the the Slack, there's um, an event subscription where it retrieves all the message. I see a message for Ponybot. I'm going to send that to an API gateway on AWS. And eventually, based on the type of request, it will fire uh, a Lambda script, which is the brain of Ponybot. And then eventually, just pass on the message to Amazon Lex, which is the NLP uh, behind the scenes, so natural uh, language processing. <clears throat> so the idea behind Amazon Lex is really much to uh, provide you all the different way at detecting questions, right? And so you make it more human and you don't hard code all your type of questions. So the, the main challenge was that, do we actually want to hard code specific keywords in the uh, in the script, or we go with something that could detect and, and make it more uh, flexible at this point. Um, just to go back really quick, um, eventually we, well, right now too, is that we're collecting all the data or sending all the data to Splunk. Um, and we'll have a couple more slides on the reason why too. So the benefits uh, on AWS Lambda. So eventually it's um, everything's on the cloud, right? You don't have any server to manage, uh, so serverless. Scalability, uh, cost effective as well. So you pay as you go, pretty much. If um, eventually, if you have like higher user adoption, uh, the more uh, posting will be hitting the script. So you'll be firing the script more. Um, but eventually, it's it's still cost effective at this point. Real time stream processing. So part of your script, you could actually just um, uh, fire everything in real time and send all the data back to Splunk as well as part of that. Is integration with the AWS uh, CloudWatch S3 API Gateway, um, SNS, uh, out-of-the-box metrics as well. Uh, so CloudWatch is the way that we collect all the data. Um, I'll go more into details after. Uh, the API Gateway is pretty much on um, how do we get Slack to access or hit your, your Lambda endpoint. On the Amazon Lex side, um, like I said, it was more looking for uh, an NLP solution that could be like very easy to maintain. Uh, we're more looking into let's try not to reinvent the wheel and more like explore any solutions that is already on the market. Are we really looking to build our own mach uh, machine learning algorithms or should we just use a current solution available in the market, right? Um, so e easy to use, to maintain. Uh, you, you also have the possibility for multiple chatbots too. Um, eventually, like there, there'll be some uh, what's next, right? If if we want to scale Ponybot to a certain way to answer like multiple type of uh, subjects or topics, uh, those are the type of solution evaluation that we have to go through. And at least we da do have those type of options to go make it happen. Um, how do we interact with Ponybot? Um, like normal people like you or normal Splunkers or Slack users, uh, just a direct mention to add Ponybot. Um, all you have to do is just invite the uh, pony bot in your, any channels you want. Uh, so it doesn't have to scan through any channels uh, and, and blow it out all, all the, the whole workspace. Um, and the idea behind like uh, a direct uh, mention is that if you feel like sharing, right? Uh, sometimes you know that people keep asking the same questions. Why not answering the same thing or questioning the, the same uh, question to, to a, a Slack bot and eventually share that to, to a broader audience. So you're more helping your peers, uh, doing knowledge transfer at the same time. Uh, you're, also, you're also building channel history. Um, I know the Splunk user groups does have a, a certain limit, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to find a solution eventually. Um, yeah. Uh, continuous showcase, replies in thread. Um, so replies in thread, that, that is pretty cool. Um, I think the idea behind it is that you don't want to, you want to teach Slack people also to use uh, Slack, right? Um, how many times that you, people has been asking questions and people would just answer like, uh, and, and spamming the whole channel just because you're going through the same topic. So containing these within a thread would make a uh, better sense. So you control all your topic and all, all your context all together. And direct message. Um, so for anyone that doesn't feel like sharing, um, sometimes it's kind of embarrassing asking like very simple questions. So you do have that uh, type of channel to, to hit uh, Ponybot to ask your questions and be less prone to criticism if, if you want to. 
So these three are kind of examples of how you can um, reach Ponybot. Next one. Um, so we, we came up with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, eventually, like when you build solutions, uh, especially for, for Ponybot, uh, if you want to maintain it, but also enhance it and keep it very, um, get it better, I, I would say. So you have to splunk, learn, teach, train, and feed your pony, right? Um, so what do we suggest, or what we do now is that we Splunk everything. So every solutions that you build, you try to collect all the data within Splunk. So you try to turn them into doing. So learn her moves. So you want to see how PonyBots is doing, right? Um, how we coded things, does it work right? Uh, what's not working? So having the data can actually make sure that PonyBot is um, doing the, the right thing. Uh, teach new tricks, right? Uh, sometimes you you can pull out from from some feedbacks. You can see how people are interacting with PonyBot. So collecting those type of questions can figure out, oh, um, are these type of questions that we should implement into, uh, into the bot? Train super kicks level 9,000 plus. Um, it's not perfect sometimes the way that PonyBot answers questions. So the idea behind it is just to make it better. Um, and feed PonyGotchi, right? Um, so PonyBot is all about uh, keeping track of her daily life, uh, but also making sure that she's healthy. Um, so it's, it's everything about the Splunk. So I'll go into the demos. I know it's, uh, it's more exciting seeing that in, in more actions. So let's see. Oops. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, you want to hold it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. That's what we call teamwork. Teamwork, yeah, perfect. So, PonyBot here is, um, okay, let's say if I'll just create a new channel, like I said, um, testing, right? Uh, skip for now. Now, PonyBot is not here, so you'll just invite her or him. Right? And you can start interacting. Hopefully, it works. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, there we go. Did I get a reply? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll just expand it. Yeah. Sorry about the Wi-Fi issues here. And the good thing about NLP, like I said, is really make it more um, personalized and in a way that the answers is always um, different every time, right? So you can say, um, hello. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll jump in straight to the uh, direct message. So uh, this weekend I came up with something that I wanted for, for Conf more specifically. Um, I'll uh, put Matt Modestino on the spot. So well, what you could do, and, and the idea behind uh, PonyBot is more like make it showcase like something more flexible, right? And, and if, if you think of it, um, the idea behind an LP or the Amazon Lex is as long as it's able to detect the intent or the type of questions that someone is looking for, uh, you can actually do multiple triggers. Actually go um, reply with specific uh, answers, uh, up to five if I remember correctly, uh, but also at the same time uh, fire another Lambda scripts. And so for this one is more asking, hey PonyBot, give me all the sessions for Matt Modestino and eventually pokes at the conf API and returns you all the sessions. So uh, the speakers, the room, but also the, the time and the, uh, uh, the date and time. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, um, let's see. Give me the sessions for Clara. Uh, let's see. Right. You want to see how she reacts if you don't have one? Huh? 
There you go. So, hey, uh, Ponybot just ran over a pothole. Couldn't find any sessions for Clara Merriman. Uh, please <laughs> hop again. Sorry. My <laughs> and another one, right? Uh, give me the sessions for, uh, let's say, Tim Tully. And that was today, was it? Yeah, 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so let me show you the other piece behind Splunk now. Um, I think you've seen enough on the Slack side. So like I said, like building solutions internally is all about uh, technical devs as well. So you want to ensure that everything you build is being captured. Um, so the idea is just to know exactly, well, how is the service healthy? You got to answer those like minimal questions. Uh, but also at the same time, how do we make it better? So collecting all these data into Splunk gives us more visibility on what Ponybots uh, do uh, on a daily basis. So the Ponybot uh, overview is all looking into, okay, well, how many questions do we get on a daily basis? So you want to see these user adoptions. And the good thing about user adoptions is that you want to see if your product is actually good or not, right? And you want to adapt based on what your your, your user audience is looking for. How many questions are um, that Ponybot cannot answer? Uh, that's very good too, right? Sometimes we end up with uh, perhaps new uh, FAQ. Um, eventually, we, that we have to put in into uh, into Slack. The success rate um, is she really answering questions all the time or not? How many users interacting uh, with with the bot? how people are reaching either over channel or maybe direct mention. Top users, interaction over time. And this piece here is kind of cool, which gives you a distribution of all the different categories, right? Uh, uh, what are the reasons why uh, people are reaching the, the, the Slack bot? What type of questions people are asking? So we can maybe come up with some materials or maybe some user educations or try to build something more for knowledge uh, gathering and, and sharing. Uh, top questions, um, you can do more into details, all the, the keywords analysis. Um, eventually, if you guys want to go like where, really further, you can do some sentiment analysis as well. Um, but it's more around questions, right? Um, so it's nothing really much uh, towards that. I'm pretty sure people can come up with uh, really good creative um, ideas. And we're kind of really open to feedbacks. Yeah. So API gateway. Um, so you want to see who's reaching the, the API gateway. So far, everything is showing on the East Coast. Um, so it's probably coming straight from, from Slack uh, services. Uh, but the idea is also to see if there are different bad actors as well. So it's more on the security aspect, too, uh, that you, we can push forward. Um, but more looking at the access logs to uh, what type of uh, status codes are, are we getting. Um, if we're getting a non-200, then we know that the API uh, gateway could be, uh, could be wrong. Uh, the response time too, uh, you want to see and ensure that your API is uh, responding really fast and efficiently. So we're keeping track of that. It's still looking good. The Lambda overview, so your script execution. Um, eventually, like I said, is everything is pay as you go, pretty much, uh, depending on the compute power and, and resources that you're using. If you keep it that minimal, then you're really efficient and being caring a lot more about all the all the costs behind it. Um, if we make any changes to the script, then uh, you could probably tell if something is wrong based on your new deployment and kind of circle back to your code and improve it eventually. Pony Health, um, so you do have like a um, big overview of the architecture, but also at the same time, the idea behind this dashboard is more to uh, showcase uh, the user how uh, the, the bot is being built uh, behind the scene, but also have uh, an explanation of the, the workflow or the call flow behind. So everyone could just look at it and understand how the architecture is, is working on and giving you some uh, good metrics to measure the, the service. Um, the other piece, Ponybot team, I'll, I'll present it uh, after. So I have a, a credit scene uh, for you guys. Um, next, uh, one sec. Okay. 
Okay, there you go. So after seeing all, all the demo, so what's next, right? Um, eventually what we want based on our vision is like everyone to ride their own pony, um, which is coming soon. I know it's something that we would love to put in the uh, Slack user groups. Um, we do have some constraint today, but hopefully we'll, we'll try to find a solution for that. Um, and enhance Pony, right? I kind of expect uh, more people to provide feedbacks and eventually make it better and perhaps uh, share the fun with, with other people as well. Uh, so for the, for the jokies who participate in, in that uh, hackathon, um, I'd like to thank uh, Clara and Disha, uh, two of the people in my team that we kind of enjoy a lot. Uh, so be, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> so really special thank you to them uh, for helping making this happen. Um, we'll be at uh, the Ask the Expert, especially Clara and myself, if we want to go more into details or the technicality behind it. Um, and perhaps if you guys have some Q&A uh, questions uh, for now, um, go ahead. I'm not sure. Do we have like uh, questions? Yeah. yeah. Right? Or Q&A? No? Okay. Or um, if you don't feel like asking your questions or sharing your feedbacks, uh, go ahead with uh, going to on that link or scanning that QR code. Um, it's essentially just making sure that we're collecting as much info as possible and make it better. So, yeah, that's all. Yay. Well, thank you. <laughs>